together. All right, Garth, no, thank you for coming. Uh, police are conducting operation to investigate serious and criminal offending associated with the illicit tobacco in South Australia. Operation Eclipse has been focused for some time on uh, offences including arson, uh, assault, extortion and money laundering linked to the illegal uh, activity around tobacco since May this year. Police have been working to identify criminal networks who are using illicit tobacco and uh, have been working with other agencies to disrupt their illegal activities. Operation Eclipse was established uh, to develop a strong working relationship with Victoria and our other law enforcement uh, partners and we've been using that to share intelligence in, uh, in order to disrupt that criminal activity. South Australian Police will not tolerate criminal behaviour which poses a risk to the community and we have already made arrests in relation to this operation. So far we have linked seven arson attacks uh, to this illicit uh, tobacco industry and we continue to seek out and identify further offending which we believe has included assaults and attempts at extortion. Serious and organised crime detectives are conducting Operation Ellipse have identified 15 uh, other identities which we believe are linked to this offending. Besides the two arrests that have been made, we've seized uh, thousands of dollars in cash and we're continuing to conduct investigations into those matters. We are working with our law enforcement partners but also consumer business affairs tobacco investigations who undertake uh, regulatory uh, oversight of tobacco in South Australia. I'll take some questions. Kenny, do you have any more details about this morning's incident? Uh, there was an incident that was identified at Blair Offal this morning. Um, I'm led to believe that a Molotov cocktail has attempted to be thrown through a business there. Um, it is early in that investigation, but we are certainly taking it seriously and we are endeavouring to see whether there are links between that offending this morning and uh, this um, uh, activity that we've already been looking at since May. It's understood that it was an IT business that was firebombed, but there was potentially a tobacco dealing shop next door. Is it your understanding that it was a case of mistaken? As I said, it's still very early in the investigation. And so we are investigating whether there are potential links there uh, and whether they may in fact be tied. Are you any, any closer to an arrest? Uh, as I said, very early in the investigation. Uh, I believe patrols were only sent there in the middle of the day today. Um, so we still have a long way to go before we can uh, get to that point. So you believe that Blair Athol incident is linked to the Henry Beach? Uh, there's been a series of these over time. Obviously there's seven that we, we've identified and I believe you've got a list of those seven since May. Um, we think that they are linked together. Um, whether they are all done by the same people is still in the investigation. Do you, there's nothing about Blair Athol in this one? Uh, that's primarily because this was done prior to the, uh, as I said, the Blair Athol matter being uh, reported. Uh, or at midday today. Right. Can you give us some, a little bit more detail on that one? Yeah. I don't think we're aware. Of yeah, no, sorry. I was incident. talking about the Brooklyn Park last uh, week. Well, uh, as for the Blair Arthur one, though, I can't give you any more detail. This is said very early in the investigation. In relation to Brooklyn Park, uh, that particular matter, again, uh, was a tobacco shop. Um, that is definitely linked to one of the previous uh, tobacco uh, shop targets. Uh, and so we are investigating those links and uh, the targeting of that premises. So there's eight altogether then? Yeah. Uh, there would be in fact, well, no, sorry, I can't confirm the one today oh. is linked. Certainly the seven we have given you are linked. The eighth one today we're looking into. In terms of how far this goes in terms of overseas organised crime, is it is it linked to overseas trafficking or, or games that are overseas? Uh, illicit tobacco comes into Australia primarily through uh, the border. Uh, that is uh, dealt with by Australian Border Force. We are working very closely with the Australian Border Force in relation to these matters. Once tobacco has uh, entered the state, uh, it then becomes a matter for the state to deal with. And so the actual illicit tobacco itself is a matter for consumer business affairs and their tobacco investigation regulators. Um, however, when that tobacco then is linked to uh, criminal activity, uh, which is what we're looking at, the attempted extortions, arsons, uh, acts of violence, then that falls to SOPOL and we are looking at and taking that very seriously. But we are working right across all Australian jurisdictions and all of our uh, partner agencies to identify and disrupt this kind of criminal activity. Do you think we're going to see SA look a lot like Melbourne or Victoria has 
But as I said, we're not, we're not uh, uh, going to tolerate this kind of activity. Um, we have worked very closely with the, our Victorian counterparts, um, and so we have moved very quickly to disrupt uh, and identify networks so that we don't end up in that uh, position. The state government's currently looking to try and shut down these businesses. Is Operation Eclipse working with that? We are, uh, in relation to the businesses, that's a matter for Consumer Business Affairs. We are working with Consumer Business Affairs uh, to identify links uh, and where we identify uh, matters that fall within their scope, then we refer those matters to them. Um, and and uh, as you'd be aware, the criminal matters, we're holding the soap on and we're investigating those. So are you confident we won't end up like Victoria? Do you think we can sort of nip it in the bud before that happens? Or It is absolutely our intent to uh, prevent ourselves getting in the position where uh, we've had mass arsons in the way that Victoria has. Uh, however, um, uh, we've got to act very proactively and we're asking for assistance from the public uh, to identify uh, areas where that criminal activity is occurring. At the same time, we are saying to people, um, do not engage in purchasing um, illicit tobacco products because that only feeds back into these networks. And this might, not, this might be more for the Attorney General or the Commissioner, but in terms of laws and cracking down on these people, are they sufficient? I mean, what is the penalty for trafficking tobacco? Um, federally, the Commonwealth legislation is uh, the Treasury Laws uh, Amendments Illicit Tobacco Offences Bill, and excuse me while I quote that, um, that comes with a maximum penalty of five years jail and $313,000 fines. So there are significant uh, Commonwealth penalties in relation to um, selling uh, illicit tobacco. Um, and uh, they are part of the legislation that can be used to help disrupt these groups. And certainly we've had previous convictions in South Australia in relation to those matters. What's your message to the, the members of these groups that are A, selling this type of product, but B, also um, committing arson as well? Um, that's a serious criminal activity. We intend to identify and uh, do everything with our power to prosecute those members who are doing that. Um, the reality is, um, if you do not engage in criminal activity, you don't come uh, into our gamut. Um, so uh, our message is, um, don't undertake criminal activity. How important is your relationship with Victorian Police? Obviously you're working closely. Are you getting good intelligence? And all? Uh, all of the Australian jurisdictions uh, are aware of these groups and the um, uh, illicit tobacco being transported around Australia, into Australia. And we are all working very, very cooperatively in this cooperatively in this space. Um, we have in fact uh, assisted Victoria with investigations in this state of recent times um, and they are certainly supporting uh, our investigations uh, and where we have links uh, then both forces are aware of those links and are sharing that information. Last question. Thank you. <laughs>